Hi guys, welcome back to another video. It's your girl RJ. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for clicking to watch my video. If you're not new here, welcome back. In today's video, I'm just going to be doing my makeup because I want to film some more videos because you know how people like to start brand new at the beginning of the year. I'm going to try starting brand new the month before. Um, so I'm starting brand new today, which is December the 1st. But anyway, um, in this video, I'm going to be doing my makeup, and I love makeup and chat videos, but your girl ain't got no chatting. I don't have no tea. Life is boring, so I don't have I don't have a story to tell, so I'm just going to talk about this show that I watched today. If you don't already know, I am a major, major true crime TV fan. Major. <laughs> like, I have watched all of the Fatal Attractions for my man, for my woman, um, Snapped, Deadly Vows, Deadly Women, all of those shows. There's a new show, well, I don't know if it's new, but I just discovered it. I think it's called Dark Obsessions or something like that. I found it on YouTube. And I've been, I've been watching that. I haven't gotten through all of them because a lot of times those shows, they make me mad. Like the one that I started watching today and I had to stop watching, like the lady, it was like in a time before cell phones. This lady was in the house with her man and she was on the phone with her mom. Her mom and her well, another of her relatives were pl was planning to come over. And she was like, oh yeah, come on over. And then she hung up the phone with them. And so they were on the way to her house. And the man was like, I don't feel like having company. They can't come here. And like I said, it was before cell phones. So she couldn't call him back and be like, oh, so-and-so doesn't feel like company. Well, first of all, I wouldn't do that anyway because this is just as much my house as it is yours. But that's a whole nother story. So her relatives got there, her mama. Like, not just any relative, her mother. And another relative got to her house and they were outside knocking and he wouldn't let her answer the door. And that's when I cut it off. I don't know, I gotta, maybe I'll try to watch it tomorrow, but I got so mad, I had to turn it off. But anyway, the show that I ended up watching, it's a Canadian true crime show, and it's called Crime Beat. I had never heard of it before, but I just um, ran across it today. I think that's the name of it. Yeah, Crime Beat. And the one that I watched today was If Anything Happens to Me. So, we're just going to get into doing my makeup. I just used the uh, Too Faced Hangover RX and I put it all over my face as a moisturizer and primer. And I'm also going to go in with the Touch and Soul No Problem and put it all over my face as well. But, um, Crime Beat, the episode that I watched today, uh, it started out, a lady was being interviewed and she was talking about her daughter and you know how she was athletic she was a sweet girl she didn't you know get into any trouble she was just the perfect child and then she was talking about how and she had gotten a scholarship um it was to come somewhere here in the united states for track and field i can't remember where it was now but it was to come here to the united states and everything and she was just, you know, doing everything that you do when you're leaving high school or whatever and getting ready to start college. And she had a younger sister. So she had a younger sister and they were like, you know, it kind of hit home a little bit because they were like kind of like the same number of years apart as me and my sister. And, you know, they had that love-hate relationship where it's like, you know, you're, you ride or die for each other. But also, you, you can fight like cats and dogs as well. So, the mother, she said she was at work one day, and she called home, and nobody answered the phone. I can't remember their names. I can't remember which one is which. I know one one was named Marsha, and the, other one, the, the oldest one was named Marsha, yeah. So, she was like, oh, Marsha's probably on the phone with some of her friends and not answering. I'm using the LA Girl Foundation in the shade Coffee. Actually, no, I need to do my eyes first. Um, She's probably on the phone and she's not answering. So, she doesn't think anything of it. She waits and she calls back again. Same thing. She didn't think anything of it, you know. 
just being teenagers. She just figured that her daughters were just being teenagers, and she's on the phone. She didn't feel like cl uh, clicking over to answer the beep or whatever. So when she gets off from work, she goes home, and when she arrives home, the front door is like halfway open, and. Oh, I started getting goosebumps at this point because you already know it's not going to end good. So, she goes into her house and she's calling Marsha, she's calling Tammy, and nobody's answering her. She goes all through the house and then she goes to go down in her basement. I'm using the Naked Heat palette and I'm using the shade Sauced and I'm going to put it all over my lid. So she goes down into the basement and as she's as she's going down into the basement she can see one of the daughters. I think she can see Marsha laying on the ground. And so I don't want to go down there because she I guess she can she can already feel that it's not gonna be good. So uh, people get there and when they get there, it's like they go down and then they come back up and they ask her like, okay, what were, what does Marsha look like? What does Tammy look like? What do you know what they were wearing today? Stuff like that. And so she tells them and that's when they tell her that they're both down there. And because she knew that Marsha was down there because she could see her. But she wasn't sure if Tammy was down there. Because Tammy was supposed to be gone somewhere. So... They tell her that they're both down there and they're both deceased. How heartbreaking is that? So, they tell her that and then, you know, they're doing an investigation and this and that. And then, I can, you know how, like, hindsight... Oh, let me back up a little bit. Um, before this happened, the one daughter, the one that was getting ready to go off to college... She had a, a track meet or something like that. And at the track meet, her mom was telling different people, oh, my baby is going to be going to, I cannot remember the school. It's going to mean she got a scholarship. She's going to be going so-and-so, so-and-so. And she was, you know, because she was proud. So she was trying to share it with everyone. And when they got in the car to leave from the track meet, um, Marsha said to her mom, why do you keep telling everybody that? And she was like, oh, that's because I'm proud. And this was a prime example of uh, if something is going on with you, you need to communicate it to your loved ones and to your family. Because hindsight, when the mom thought back on it, she realized that th there was a reason why she didn't want everyone to know that she was going to be leaving. She just wanted to leave without, without anyone knowing that she was leaving. So then, let's go back to where I was that they're doing the investigation this and that and the mom thinks about another time when Marsha said to she just came out of the blue and said to her if anything ever happens to me it was I think his name was Rohan it was Rohan if anything ever happens to me and I'm just lightly filling in my brows because they don't need that much because I tinted my brows and I need to do a new brow tint video because I took a brow tint class and I learned some new things so I want to share it with y'all so I gotta film that too but anyway she thought back to uh, Marsha telling her if anything ever happens to me it was Rohan which was her not really her boyfriend they had dated but they weren't dating currently but he would not leave her alone but she did not tell her mom this hold on i gotta concentrate <laughs> So anyway, after all of the craziness of, you know, the investigations going on and on, the mom thinks about that um, Marsha said that to her. So she tells the police, hey, look at this guy. This guy is someone that's been to my house several times. He and my daughter, they were friends, like in, in middle school. And then they kind of dated for a little while. But they weren't currently dating. But my daughter told me if anything ever happened to her, that it would be him. So they kind of have him in their radar. But there is no like physical evidence at the scene of the crime. 
so the, the when it's like a like something like that that's so heinous it like grabs your attention so the girls seeing as though both of them were killed um they were like you know popping news at the time so shortly after you know they got murdered and then their uh, investigation was going on um another crime happens another awful crime happens where this guy he's killed at a transit station he was leaving work and uh someone came up had him at knife point and made him go into like the office to try to open the safe he couldn't get the safe open because two keys are required to open the safe so then when he couldn't get the safe open he was going to leave but then the alarm started going off the robber was going to leave but then the alarm started going off and he turned around and came back and he stabbed the man several times and killed him so when he was leaving the scene someone was outside and they saw him leaving so they were able to give the um, police officers hey a description of the person and what they were wearing and what direction they went in so from this information they went to this nearby apartment complex and they were like search canvassing the complex and looking for information looking for like to see if they saw anybody around or anything like that and some kind of way they ended up um going through like the dumpsters and everything in the apartment complex so when they went through the dumpsters they found this article of clothing i think it was a hoodie or something they found this article of clothing that was kind of similar to what the person said they saw the person fleeing the scene wearing so they took the hoodie and they tested it and it had the guy that just got killed at the transit center it had his dna on it so they knew that that hoodie was at that scene where the guy just got murdered after that happens so i guess some they're investigating they're, they still haven't found anyone they just have this hoodie and so they have the guy that the the murder victim's dna on the hoodie as well as they have some some someone else's dna that's on the hoodie so presumably the other dna that's on the hoodie is from the suspect so they just have they just have a dna profile at the moment so so then some kind of way they find they find DNA they test the DNA that oh, that concealer just disappeared oh no Ellie girl is tripping it just disappeared they have the DNA that's underneath one of the girls fingernails and the DNA that's underneath one of the girls fingernails matches the mystery DNA from the hoodie I think it was a hoodie from the article of clothing that they got from the dumpster so now they know that whoever the person was that killed the guy at the transit station was also involved in the murder of the two sisters but it was not Rohan it, the DNA did not match Rohan because they, I think they had a sample of his DNA or something I don't know but it did not match him so they had nothing tying him to the crime they not, had nothing tying him to either one of the crimes so the investigation is just going and going and going and then I I should have took notes but some kind of way like the two different sets of law enforcement that are um, working both homicides they kind of like uh, compare their notes and whatever and so they have a sketch of the person that was seen running from the transit station so with that sketch of the person some kind of way they're able to identify him I don't know if he had a criminal record and so they were able, they had his DNA or something I don't know but they were able to identify the person that was leaving the transit uh, 
place that had killed the guy there. They were able to identify him. So when they were when they once once they identified him, they're like they're still thinking like, but what? How is he connected to these girls? And so it turns out that he was the cousin of Rohan, and um, he had fled to Miami. So they had to um, bring him back to Canada from Miami. When they brought him back, they charged him with the girls' murders as well as the guy that worked at the transit station. His name was Demetria or something like that. Demetria, I think. So they charged him with the murders, but they wanted to know, like, what is your connection to the girls? So it turns out that Rohan was involved as well, which was, duh, obvious. Because he was upset because he wanted to be with Marsha and Marsha didn't want to be with him. And so he kind of like had that mindset, if I can't have you, no one can. And that's a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous person. So they were, I guess they were watching the house. They had to be watching the house. And they saw the younger sister leaving to go wherever she was supposed to be going. And when they saw her leave, they kind of like grabbed her and make, had her go back to the house and of course she going she her going back to the house her, her sister is gonna open the door and let her in so her sister opened the door let her in so now these two uh guys have access to the house and what happened was rohan killed marcia which was the girl he was obsessed with and i guess as rohan was killing marcia tammy was trying trying to escape you know to get help and that's when the cousin, I can't remember his name, the cousin grabbed her and then she was, you know, putting up a fight. And so that's how she got his DNA underneath her fingernails. But why they killed the guy at the transit station, I have no idea. It never said. I don't know if they were killing them to get money so they can flee the country or what, but it never said why they killed him. Like, not uh, not at all justifying that th them killing, you know, the sisters. Not That's not what I'm doing at all, but at least I know why they killed the sister. They killed the sister because one, the cousin was helping his cousin Rohan, and Rohan was killing, wanted to kill Marsha out of jealousy and they couldn't leave the little sister Tammy alive as a witness. So that's why they killed him. I get that. Not condoning it, but I get it. But as far as why they killed the guy at the transit station, I don't know. Rohan maintained his innocence. They both were sentenced to life in prison. One of them or either both of them are eligible for parole um in either next year or 2022 and this happened like in the 90s so yeah that was the show that i watched but i'm gonna spray and then i'll come back to finish up all right so i'm gonna pop on some lashes really quick and i want to show y'all my new lash applicator and how it assists me in putting on my lashes so but I use my lash glue. All right, so I got my glue on. And I love, I absolutely love my glue. I know a lot of people that still glue are like, oh, I got the best glue ever. But I really love my glue. And I really do think it's the best glue ever. So, we're just waiting for it to turn clear. And this is the new lash applicator that I got. It's in rose gold. And this is what the end looks like. And I feel like it just makes it 
so easy to apply the lashes. So, right here we got them, we got the lashes on the applicator, and now glue is just about clear, so they are ready to pop on. Did y'all see how easy that was? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Y'all, I and I I never can put my lashes on with my eyes open. And so now I'm just gonna use the back because I like to oh shit, shoot. I like to press like my excess glue down onto the lash just to hold it in place. And then you can also go back here and bang. And now we're going to do the other eye. And this is always my struggle eye. I should have did this eye first. We're gonna wait until the glue is clear and then we're gonna pop that lash right on. Listen, I know the struggle of applying lashes. It took me forever to learn. So whenever I see a tool or a technique that makes it easier I'm going to try it and I'm going to share it with y'all the first one was putting the, the lash glue on like liner love that but this makes it even easier I think it makes it easier because with the other applicator you're holding it and you're, you're putting it on like this so it's kind of like blocking your vision with this because it's on the side you can just pop it on there so I love these so these are on my website if you're interested, love them. I got to order some more because I think I'm down to four. So I need to order some more. But I love them. I even use them. Like I tried using them when I was putting somebody else's lash on. But I think these are good for when you're putting lashes on yourself. Because I kind of was struggling a little bit putting using these to put lashes on somebody else. These are good to me for putting lashes on other people. But these are bomb. As you just saw, super easy to pop these lashes on. While it's on, just a little bit to moisten my lips before I put this lip liner on. And that's enough. That little bit was perfect. And I'm gonna lie, I'm just using this Ruby Kisses lip liner and it's in the shade Dark Brown. Kind of overline my lips a little bit. I thought I tried. I never tried it before. And then I'm gonna use my new shade blush on my lips. I'm gonna do one more little little layer. Oh, I love this color. Do we want natural hair out? I'll be glad my hair gets a little bit longer so I can style it or do something to it. 
Because right now, all I can do is wear it like it is or put a headband on it. Alright guys, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah. Let me know if you like this type of video. I've seen a couple other YouTubers do this type of video. So I thought I would try it out. You know, and it was interesting and I love true crime. So hey, whatever. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye guys.